Well, praise God, everybody, and welcome to today's broadcast. I'm Apostle Craig Banks, and we are so glad that you have joined us. Listen, we're going to be sharing a message, actually a series, that we're doing at Canaan Christian Center, and it's about compassion. Yes, compassion. I'm not talking about a ooey-gooey feeling pitiful type of thing that people call compassion. I'm talking about the actual force that comes out of your spirit to transform lives and to actually cause miracles or you see miracles happen as a result of it. I want you to join us because you're going to learn some things and how that compassion will cause us to step into the place of forgiveness that we as believers should always be walking in. Why are things so hectic and all chaotic in our world? And the church seems to be involved in it in our day. The reason is we have shut up our hearts of compassion. But God, by his spirit, is opening that up and pulling all the junk out that stops him, compassion himself, from being seen in our lives. Come with me. Let's go into this message. It will bless you tremendously. For this generation, we need your heart, your heart, we need your heart, the heart of the ideal servant. My point is this, if you drink the Kool-Aid, you can't say nothing. I can't hear nobody in this sanctified church. See, we like the idea of being created by a genius to be a genius. And we were. But we haven't looked at the genius who created us. We think we're in and we do what we want to do. No. When you got in, that's the end of you. Christ is supposed to live through us. We were crucified. Remember when the Lord said, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Then he says, nevertheless, what? Not my will. When he was beaten and bruised, it was for us. Isaiah says that we esteemed him uh, uh, stricken of God. We esteemed, we considered him, you did something and God is unleashing his fury on you. It wasn't that he did something, we did something and he took it for us. His will had to submit to that. For our will to be freed up. Our will is freed up to hand it to him. We want to, I got got my own mind. That's your problem. It's gotten you thus far. Called nowhere. Oh God, help me. Help me with this. The scripture says in the last days, the Lord said he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. His spirit is his spirit. He is compassion. So the spirit of love, the spirit of compassion has been poured out. What are we doing with the compassion? We've been drinking religious Kool-Aid. We do the church stuff. Speed the music up. What you call it? That's praise, baby. Slow it down. That's wishing. I love you, Lord. 
Because you heard my cry. And you pitied every groom. Take joy, my king, in what you hear. Let it be. You can't do that, Caesar. <laughs> when I finish, he has a question. Where is your compassion? Because while you were singing a sweet sound in my ear, there was another sound that was drowning it out. The cries of men and women that you walk past because you deem them unfit for your $20. Somebody walk in the street and they say, can you buy me something? Can you give me some money? I'll buy you something to eat. Well, that's, I, I just wanted something to eat. Come on, I'm going to buy it for you. I ain't getting no money. They may have wanted $3 to go get some bologna from the corner store. You want them to have some vienes <laughs> for the proper folks. Vienna sausage. <laughs> they don't like that. Well, I'm the one giving. You take what I... In all things. That's why you got to have personal prayer. Because he deals with you and the issues of your heart. Hmm. This ain't rolling like I thought, but. Hmm. What is compassion? It's sympathetic consciousness. Of others' distress, together with a desire and the power to alleviate it. Remember, the Lord said, "Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and and scorpions and over all the work of the enemy." Power. We want to flaunt that among each other. Oh, that ain't nothing, uh, Pastor Sean. That ain't nothing what you just did. It's all right. God was in it, but I'm going to show you. <laughs> now, you want to see God move. Watch me. <laughs> Everything is a competition. Preachers tell folks, don't go over there. Don't they even talk about the Holy Ghost. Don't go over there. Come over here. Y'all don't talk about the Holy Ghost? Uh -uh. <laughs> but I want the Holy Ghost. You know, he ain't around no more. <laughs> Whatever. Hating because one place is full. Oh, God. The Lord said this. He said, what should I like in this generation to? Children playing in the marketplace. The marketplace is where business was to be transacted. He said, but y'all acting like children out here playing. That's like when you go shopping and you're focused on shopping and your kids are running up and down the aisles in the racks where the clothes are, pulling them off the hangers and stuff. Leave that alone, Billy. And then little Sarah over there doing some. And folks like, Lord, and then the security got to come out of high and say, look, you need to do something with your children. Don't you say nothing to my children. They tearing up stuff. We're going to arrest you and your children. Destroying stuff. That's children playing 
in the place of business. Oh, hello. Oh, so good to see you. Mama, why are you talking funny? You don't talk like that at home. <laughs> Try to talk. <laughs> Hello. <sighs> Is this making sense? <laughs> Everybody say compassion. Go, go over to uh, Matthew 18. Let me look at something here. It's not that you don't have compassion. We've let it get shut down. So what we got to do in our personal time is say, Lord, today I'm going to stop telling you what needs to happen. Give me ears to hear from you what adjustments I need to make. And you're going to find that the adjustments you need to make, you can't make it in your own strength. He has a key to stick in that heart of yours and reset it. But when he resets it, light's going to come on and you're going to see where you've allowed darkness to set up. All you got to do is repent. And don't go with this stuff, you know, you know, Lord, deal with your heart. <laughs> you think because you cried, you changed. You just cried. When you see you, you'll cry. You'll find that your heart is the ugliest thing there is. And you'll get up off of this judge and other folks. Look at him. No, look at you. They think they something. No, you think they something. <laughs> Hello, saints. Ask somebody else, say, where is your compassion? Let's look at something right quick. Uh, Matthew 18. <clears throat> See, in Matthew 18, this is where we got the famous scripture, whatever you bind on earth. Well, Y'all don't believe it. I might have to read it to you. Look at verse 18, Matthew chapter 18. Assuredly or verily I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And we say that's in prayer, and we exercise in the authority that God has given us through the Lord Jesus Christ when he stood up and said, ah, oh, power. Mm, heaven and earth is in my hand. That's power. We got authority over all demons. Whatsoever I bind on earth, it's bound in heaven. <laughs> Ain't no devil in heaven. But I want you to look at something, then we're going to leave you alone. Y'all actually getting out of church before 12. Ah. <laughs> I ain't heard no amen out of that section. You say getting, you hear that, Pastor Kevin? Look at this. Matthew 18, look at verse 21. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him. Footnote, this word brother has to do with covenant. We're in the family. So we got issues in the, in the, in the family. How often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Raise the lid on your forgiveness. Because you're going to see this, that we always talking about whatever we bind on earth and all. You're going to see how it's played out. Instead of being an asset, we take it and use it the wrong way. Now it becomes more like a liability. Verse 23, therefore the kingdom of heaven, kingdom, is like a certain king. You got a kingdom, you got a king. We're in the kingdom of God. Christ is the king. That means he run it. 
A certain king wanted to settle accounts with his servants, and when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. If you write in your Bible, write down around $100 million. Now, that's King Roland. You got a servant that owes you 100 mil. You fucking out, loaning out 100 mil? You ain't gave nobody all your kingdom. A hundred mil? <laughs> and he was just one. And he said he settled accounts. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold. Oh, you done got this. For whatever reason, he can't pay. Commanded that he be sold with his wife and children. You go from handling business to now you put on the slave block. Sell him. Him and his wife. Get Esmeralda and the kids. <laughs> and all that he had. So he, you know, he benefited from that hundred mil. Get his boat. He got a Rolls. He got a Maserati. Take the gold chain off his neck. Get all that he got. Strip him down to nothing. That payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him saying, Master, have patience with me and I will pay you all. Then the master of that servant was Did the man owe him? Yeah. But look at what compassion did. Yeah. If my heart is hardened, there is no moving. Yeah. Move with compassion. Released him. So compassion is an action word. Oh, I just feel something. Come on, get beyond feeling and do something. Released him. And forgave the debt. All right, all right. Released him and wait a minute. Released him from the judgment. Esmeralda ain't got to cry no more. Stop crying, is. He get to keep his car in his house. He get to keep the gold chain around his neck. He get to keep his Nikes. And then he forgave the debt. Yeah. Wait a minute. You owe this man a hundred mil. And he forgives a hundred mil. He forgives it. We ain't gonna even call you in no more about this. Come on now. You know if you forgiven of a hundred mil, a whole bunch of folks find out you forgiven of a hundred million dollars. Tabloid, Facebook. Instagram, any other place out there. Your business is out there. You've been forgiven of this. But the servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him 100 denarii, $160. What was he going to do with $160? What was he going to do with $160 toward a debt of 100 mil? He got more than $160 in his bank account. Because the, the, the king said seize everything he got. So you know they're gonna one first thing they're gonna do is go take your house and your bank account. They're gonna put it on freeze. He got something in there. And if he hiding it in the mattress, they're gonna get that too. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe. That's a hard heart. That's one that don't care about nothing but what I want. That's one that's lacking compassion. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, have patience with me and I will pay you all. Same words he used. Because he in the same predicament, just different amounts. Come on now, when you're broke, broke is broke. 
Hurt is hurt. Hungry is hungry. Coming up short is coming up short. Anybody ever come up short? I remember a time when I, in my life, I'd come up short and folks would walk by and say, you ain't got no faith. Oh, if the Lord don't help me. They were about to leave the earth. And you know what the Lord would say? Forgive them. Oh, God. It hurts, but I choose to obey you. All of this is a choice. The moment you choose not to do things the kingdom way, your heart goes home. It starts hardening. And you see people through cynical eyes. I got to go. I got to go. Have patience with me and I'll pay you all. And he would not, but went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. Come on now. You can't throw nobody in prison. You got to go through a process. He had the guy prosecuted. They in court. The judge looking at him crazy. $160? I don't care. I want my money. Come on, how's he going to pay him back from prison? The prison be like, oh, we can get some free labor. Okay, we're going to pay you 25 cents a day. You got to work for nine and a half hours. And, you know, probably after a few years, you'll be able to pay that $60, $160 back. But this guy's strapping on interest. So he'll stay in prison for a long time. Look what happened. So when his fellow servants saw what had been done, they were grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, you wicked servant. I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Keep in mind, the question was, my brother. The parable talks about servants. As a brother in the family, you're supposed to operate at a whole different level. You were born into this family. You just walk up in his I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant just as I had pity on you? Oh, 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 oh. here's what we're missing it. The king had compassion on us. We had no way to get back to God. There was absolutely no way for nobody to get back to God. And God, who is compassion, saw us without a shepherd. We were cut off. We didn't have any, we, we had no covenant. We had no rights to nothing. Hell bound. And he had compassion and took the punishment for us so that we could get in. He showed compassion. He said, why won't you show the same compassion that I showed towards you? And we forgot. And his master was angry and delivered him to the tormentors until he should pay all that was due to him. So my heavenly father also will do to you if each of you, brothers and sisters, from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. You know why people won't forgive? They've let their bowels of compassion shut up. So if you're struggling with forgiving, ask the Holy Spirit to show you where your compassion is. 
Because if I won't forgive, I've forgotten that I was forgiven. That's the introduction. Y'all stand on your feet. Well, praise God. Wasn't that great? That's so good. And guess what? That's just the beginning. There is so much more to come. We want you to learn what the Spirit of God has been teaching us about compassion. I'm telling you, compassion will move you to action. It'll move you to doing things. Because he, compassion himself, lives on the inside of you. Let's stop hating on each other because of the color of our skin, because of our particular level or lack of wealth. Those are no reasons. When we understand kingdom, we start focusing on what's important to the king himself. And I want you to know, he is full of compassion. And so that's the same way we're supposed to be, full of compassion every day, not just Sunday, every day, every day. Listen, let me pray for you before we leave. And I, I want you to uh, understand how much we appreciate you for tuning into this broadcast. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that by the power of the Holy Spirit, every person listening to the sound of my voice, that they will open their hearts of compassion and begin to be sensitive to the Spirit of God, that they will allow you to cause them to be rooted and grounded in love, in your compassion, in the covenant promise so that they can allow Christ to be seen in their life. Bring peace to their hearts and cause them to make a difference in the lives of others. We receive this, we believe it, in Jesus' name, amen. Listen, thank you so much for joining us. Be sure to join us next time for more of the heart of a servant and allow the king himself to reproduce his heart, the heart of the ideal servant in you. You're a child of God, carry his heart, amen. Thank you for joining us for The Heart of a Servant, an outreach ministry of Canaan Christian Center in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. If you are in the Pine Bluff area, we'd love for you to join us on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m., for our United Prayer on Tuesdays at 6 p.m., and for our midweek service on Wednesday night at 7 we would also like to give a special thank you to all of our covenant partners. If you are interested in becoming a covenant partner, please visit our website or send us an email. We are Canaan Christian Center, praying that you have the heart of the ideal servant. Serve